Hi, good evening all. This is Abhay from Manupatra. Uh, if you want to introduce yourselves in the chat window, so just give us your name or your college or anything else if you want to share. So please. Hello everyone. A very good evening to all of you. Thank you so much for joining in for this session. Uh, this is the legal research workshop for beginners and first years. Uh, from Manupatra also, uh, as you know, you can see on the screen, we have a live Q&A. Uh, I have my colleague Abhay from Manupatra on the chat support and he'll be answering any and all queries that you have. And uh, before we start, we'll first, uh, there are two things. One, it would be great if everyone who's participating introduces themselves in the chat window. So please share your name, your college, which year you're from. And again, throughout the session, if you have at any point, any questions, please feel free to ask them. We'll answer them either on chat or I'll be taking them live and showing it to you on this in the session itself. Um, I really hope that this is a learning experience for everyone. So without further ado, we'll start. First of all, before we start, uh, uh, we'll just introduce Manupatra to you because we have a lot of first years here. And, uh, you know, there's a fair chance that you might not have heard of Manapatra. All, almost all colleges have subscription to Manapatra. So you would be introduced either by uh, your library team or your seniors. Uh, and given COVID and the fact that a lot of you haven't been to college. So we'll do that here. Uh, just allow me a second to share my screen. And I'll just show you guys what Manapatra is. So here you go. Now, this is like to access Manupatra, all you need to do is go to manupatrafast.com or manupatra.com and this is how the portal looks like. Um, since uh, there are mostly college students here, I'll show you how do you log into Manupatra. More than that, Manupatra is a legal research database and we are a legal tech company. So essentially we provide SaaS products for the law industry. So we have a multitude of products as well as that we have a lot of free resources for students as well. So I'll just introduce, uh, you know, what all we do and then we can move on to, uh, you know, understanding legal research and how do you use Manupatra and how do you uh, essentially do legal research effectively? Why is it important to you as a law student and all of that? Um, first of all, uh, just to begin, these are all the products. We have My Case, we have Verificare, we have Law Skills, DDLX. Now, as students, you would be interested in Law Skills because that is our e-learning platform. There are a lot of courses that are available there, uh, both professional level as well as beginners levels. There are a lot of very good free courses that are available there from GDPR to business laws and, all of, um, and more. Please go check them out. If you want, enroll in a course, see how it goes for you keep learning more and you know just uh, that is this is our initiative from Manapatra to make sure that your legal education is not just confined from um, your academics and your college but also extends to practical aspects and from professionals who are actually practicing in the field. Uh, furthermore, there are two more important uh, portals that Manapatra has which are absolutely free of cost for um, you know which are absolutely free of cost for students. The first one is academic. Now, uh, Manapatra Academic on here, in here, just go to academic.manapatra.com. It's a free resource. You have a lot of information or free resources that would be very helpful to you as a student. Subject-wise cases on relevant sections of different acts, conventions and treaties, if you're going for MOOCs, if you're going for MUN, especially every treaty that you can think of is here. Articles, again, if you want to search articles, if you want to research on articles, uh, if you want to submit articles, even we even run a publication for that, submit your articles to us, uh, you know, we'll work with you to make sure that we are able to publish them, how to do legal research. This has a lot of resources on how do you approach legal research, how do you approach legal research for a moot, how do you approach legal research for a research paper? There are different, uh, more resources like legal maxims, eBooks, moot memorials, Manapatra training, video lectures, test your own proficiency on how well can you use Manapatra. Uh, 
these are all going to be helpful not just in your first year but throughout the five years of your law school uh, next i'll just show you articles manupatra if you ever want to search uh, you know read on a topic or you're researching for a project very easily you can just go to articles.manupatra um you have articles by students professionals academic journals law firms case studies briefs subject wise articles just go type in your search run your search and you will find uh, amazing articles that are actually beneficial for you you can read them you can download them you can share them with your peers so this is about academic and articles which are free resources that are provided by manupatra for all law students now coming to the thing that you are actually here for legal research and how do you do legal research so uh, first of all i would just like to you know for anyone who has a question on what exactly legal research is especially given that uh, you know we might have a lot of first years so we'll do two things first of all i'll launch a poll and you can just register which year of law school you are in once we do that and also we can see uh, you know if you have access to a legal research database from your law school i'll just launch this poll register your vote whichever year of law school you are in and that would help us you know uh, design this webinar even further when i am explaining i can you know get an idea of what the demographic looks like so please just uh, put in you know your year of law school that you are so we have mostly uh, you know around 73% of first years are here so um, now that way i'll first explain what legal research is and then we'll move on to what manupatra is and how do you do it so i'll just share my screen once more and we'll see what legal research is so legal research when you think of it it seems like a very heavy word and you're constantly told that this is the backbone this is going to be the backbone not just of your law school but also your legal career so what exactly is legal research legal research is nothing but just a way of studying and learning law you know uh, when you were in law like when you were in your school days and academics were happening you used to write essays and comprehensions where you were given a topic or you were understanding a topic and you were meant to write an essay or a longer article about it legal research is very similar the only difference is that now it's not just your opinion you have to add legal authorities to it so if i say that um, you know if there is if someone sexually assaults a woman these are the kind of punishments that should be there i can't just make a statement in legal research i have to add to it why you know i feel that these punishments are there suppose a court in the us has said something which indicates which supports my kind of like the punishment that i am vouching for suppose in india some court has said something which justifies that kind of punishment so when i'm making a statement i'll always add more authority that is legal research what is the catch here how do you find those legal authorities to match the point that you are making that is what i'll teach you in this session that is what we'll teach you through manupatra right now okay so i understand that especially for the first years legal research sounds as a very daunting subject but legal research can be fast efficient and easy all you need is a comprehensive database like manupatra is all the available legal research too so it's never just enough especially in times like now to have a legal research database it needs to have features that helps you you know perform legal research better ai features uh, search features search engines um let's just take a very real life example 3 years ago or like probably 5 years ago if you wanted to listen to music you would have to go and download it now you have spotify you just listen to a music that you want to and it gives you suggestions according to your music it's just an example on how technology is supposed to help legal research you know taking a very similar vein there is a database that are, that, that is out there almost you know every single uh, database provider has that 
but it's not enough. It's important that the database also provides you with features which makes legal research easy for you. How do you do that? On Manupatra, I'll just show you right now. Meanwhile, again, uh, you know, I'll keep repeating this, but if you have any questions, please feel free to write it in the chat window. No question is going to go unanswered. We'll try our best to answer all the questions. And I really, really hope that this session is helpful for you and you have good takeaways from the session. So I'll just go back to Manupatra now and we can start with the session. Okay. So now, first of all, uh, if I'll just like to know one last thing from you guys, I'm launching a poll and it's essentially about how, uh, you know, if uh, your law school has access to um, a legal research tool or if you have access to Manupatra. I'll just launch this. Please register if you have access to Manupatra or you know how to log into Manupatra through your law school. If not, I'll explain. And again, if your college does not have Manupatra, please write it in the chat window which college you're from and we'll try to reach out to them. And if you want Manupatra for your college, you can reach out to us and we can make that happen, you know, either on a student basis or a college basis. So thank you so much, everyone, for registering. I'll just stop the poll now. So. 66% of you have an access to an online legal research tool or Manupatra through your college. If you have access, this is how you enter the portal. If not, uh, you know, almost all colleges do, you can always write to your college and they will, you know, make sure that it's provided to you. So how, if you're from a law school, if you're a student, how do you log into Manupatra? You open the portal from this website and then you go to IP users, click here. You click here. Your college is already affiliated with Manupatra. You will enter your registered email ID. I'll enter this one. Submit and you're into the portal. That's about it. That's about it how you go from, you know, using an IP access. If you're on the campus, if not, you'll be provided, you know, a user access and password from your college and then you can log. Uh, in any time, at any point of time, although your college is there to help you and support you through, uh, you know, the access that they provide, but if at any point you're having any difficulty accessing Manupatra, just write to us at contact at manupatra.com and we'll make sure, you know, we'll try our best to get it sorted out both on your end as well as the college. So now we can finally move on to what Manupatra is, how do you use it, and how can you use it effectively for your legal research. So we'll just start, I'll just switch off my camera now and we'll just focus on Manupat. So this is once you sign in into the portal, this is how the portal looks like. As I just explained, legal research is about when you're making an opinion, finding legal authorities to support the, your opinion. That is the crucial part. Now, what are legal authorities? All of you, if you're in law school, you would have prepared for CLAT or any kind of a a law exam, be it pilot, be it flat. So in that case, uh, you know, you would know what basic legal authorities are. Um, I would just walk you through all the legal authorities that we provide on Manupatra. We have a very, very comprehensive database, not just Indian, but also international. So we'll start with, I'll just walk you through quickly all the judgments, all the tribunals and commissions, all the bear acts, all the different countries that we cover. So again, we cover all Supreme Court judgments, all Supreme Court orders from 1950 and beyond. We also have the e-filing guidelines right now, which are going on with COVID for high courts. Uh, again, which uh, this is a very cliche question to ask, but if you can write it in the chat window, which is the oldest high court in India. Again, law students, the smartest of the lot, all of you know that Alcada was the oldest high court. So we have all the high courts here listed. We have all, we cover all the judgments that come through them. Uh, and again, pre-1950, post-1950, till today, any, if any judgments, judgment is announced today, you can have it on Manpatra by the next day. 
So be it being updated with current judgments or previous judgments, you can always find them on Manopatra. Next, we cover tribunals and commissions. Now, uh, we are constantly asked if we, you know, cover specific tribunals or this tribunal, that tribunal, do we cover or not? Okay. So, uh, again, um, all the tribunals are here. Be it CAT, and again, we just don't cover national tribunals. If there is central administrative tribunal, it would have branches in states. We also cover them exclusively. Okay, moving on, these are all the tribunals. We also have an international database. This is very, very helpful when you're going for MUNs again and when you're going for international. Modes. So, when you're going for international modes, and uh, you know, there are specified locations then you can always use them. Not just that, there is also the International Court of Justice. So when you're going for, you know, the most coveted um, moot court competitions that are there, be it Philip C. Tessa, be it Henry Dunan, be it Stetson, International Court of Justice, ICC, English reports, maritime cases, all of that is available there. You have this one research, uh, legal research database, and you just don't have to look at Google. Everything that you need, you can find here. Notifications and circulars are there, pair acts are there, bills and drafts are there, ebooks are there, academic ebooks are there. So, everything that constitutes a legal authority that you can think of, Manupatra provides you that. Moving on, now I'll take you. Now you already know that, okay, these are the things that are there, that are provided there. But how do you find what you are looking for? There are, you know, more than 3 million cases over here, even more. But how do I find the judgment that I'm looking for? How do I find the barrack that I'm looking for? How do I find the law that I'm looking for? Now, since most of you are first years, I would try to keep it at, you know, the things that you would be facing right now, the uh, legal issues, uh, the legal questions that you were, would be bombarded with right now. So first of all, I would just introduce what are the different kinds of search engines that we have. Now, always remember that Google is not a legal research database and everything that you find on Google, Google is not credible. So that's why you need these specific databases, these specific search engines that are provided. Now we'll start with legal search. We have different kinds of search options here. Whatever you're looking for to make, as I said, you know, at Spotify and a normal Google search example. Here you get exactly what you're looking for and to help you access it better we have these different search interfaces we'll start with legal search now legal search uh, suppose you have a party name all of you know the vishaka judgment right vishaka guidelines if you do and if you know what that judgment is about just write it in the chat chat window give me a thumbs up so that i, I know key you know you guys relate to this judgment Vishaka guidelines, Vishaka was the state of Rajasthan. Is everyone aware of that? Yes. So you guys know that, okay, this judgment, exactly, sexual harassment at workplace. Now, if I had to find that judgment, I know about it, but I need the judgment copy. How do I find it? Very simple. You don't have to use both, you know, I've already searched for. You don't have to use both the party names. You don't have to write Vishaka and state of Rajasthan. All you need to do is go into the legal search tab. You can write either party. Okay, so I'll just write here. I'll just write Kuchaka here. And I do nothing. I've just written one party name and I search. I just run the search. Okay. Uh, I'm so sorry. I had done a quote setting. I think I've done something wrong. Just a second. Just allow Hello. me a second. Uh, Ma'am, if you can see, the first few are the court orders. Uh, the court exactly. Orders so the there you have. It. If you know the party name, all the judgments that include that party name would be here. So as I search for Vishaka, you find Vishaka and others versus the state of Rajasthan. You just have to enter one party name and you get the judgment right there. It's as simple as that. Suppose there's a judge, like right now, there would be the Aryan Khan case. When that case actually comes, the judgment comes and the order comes, it would be Arin Khan versus, you know, the NCB or whoever. You All you have to know is one party. You go, you enter there, whichever case has that, uh, that person as a party name, you get that judgment. It's as simple as that. Keshwan and the Bharti. Just enter that over. I'll just run it once again. 
also the only key feature here is that you have to since you know names are proper nouns you have to take care of the spelling of the name now menaka gandhi i have written menaka gandhi case again i'm sure everyone knows so menaka gandhi i have written here but there can be different spellings for menaka right if you write a wrong spelling then the search does not work because you know at the end of it it's a machine it's very advanced technology but it's still a machine so although we use ai and legal tech uh there are key rules that you need to follow here you have to make sure that your spelling is correct i just entered menaka gandhi here i'll run the search menaka gandhi versus union of india 1978 this very 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 important case as you can see it's been cited more than 3433 times that means more than 3433 cases have referred to menaka gandhi easily you just know the party name you type it there you get your judge simple straight streamlined suppose you are in class and you are reading you know you are going through some syllabus and your professor just mentions that okay um, have you heard about the kasturi lal uh, ralia ram case for all those who are studying law of torts right now that's there in your syllabus kasturi ralia ram have you guys heard of it he hasn't given you the whole case name he hasn't given you the citation how do you find that judgment all you do is come here type the party name run the search you get the judgment simple so that's how legal search by party name goes for you next i'll show different things now suppose i am studying in your first year you would have different subjects some of you would have constitution okay now i need cases on the subject constitution all i need to do is go select the subject i selected constitution run the search this would give me all the cases that mention uh, that are you know on constitution the most cited one is here menka gandhi is here all the important cases every case that you want for constitution you can find here so if you're looking for a subject wise case list this is how you find it. most interesting is that you know you would be studying ipc can anyone tell me under ipc which section does murder come in in the chat window which section has murder okay section 300 has murder amazing great response guys so i'll just th this is what i'll do i'll select it's a central lab ipc i'll select ipc i just typed ipc i got it the section select section i'll type 300 300 300 302 300 finds the crime 302 is the punch i'll just run the search i get all the judgments which you know which have murder in it which specifically talk about murder and the section 300 there you go all you need to do is open it read the cases you know that's your search complete if you're writing a research paper on murder just enter the section run the search you have all the cases on it now you can go through the cases you can search within them and find the most relevant judgments that you're looking for it is as simple as that so that, this is what legal uh, legal search does i have simplified it a lot because as you can see there are various other features you can enter party name you can enter judge name field if i am looking for suppose i am going for arbitration against a certain judge against a certain retired judge and i want all the judgments from him on a particular subject all i have to do is enter the fields here and it would give me the relevant results that's how simple it becomes this way you're not you know blindly searching in the haystack for something if you have one piece of information and you need relevant legal authorities on that you can just go and run the search there okay now uh, the next question which is very very important we just concluded a webinar series with first years and this question was asked in every single session what is a citation can anyone tell me what a citation is and if you don't know just say that we don't know what a citation is and we'll discuss it you know in detail what is a citation does anyone know okay so you guys don't know exactly citation is something which is very important and as first years it's very difficult to know so uh, okay everyone would almost all of you would have an aadhar card right that's your social security card it has a number which is specific to you if anyone wants to search for you in a central database all they need to do is enter that number and they can find your details 
citation is the same thing for a case. Okay. Only catch is that in India you just have one Aadhaar. In citation, what happens? Suppose, okay, uh, let's look at it like this. I am a person. I can be defined by my voter ID card number, my PAN card number, my Aadhaar number, my thumbprint. All these things are unique to me. The same goes for citations. For a case, there are different citations. The Supreme Court would have its own citation when they publish it. Suppose uh, Bombay Law Report, they publish the same case. They would give it a, again a unique number. That is their citation. Now, if I need to find a case and I have the citation, that's the easiest way to find a case. I'm exactly looking for that, that case and I can find it. Um, all of you have heard about the Keshwanand Bharti case. Can anyone tell me very quickly what is it about? Why is Keshwanand Bharti case so important? Anyone in the chat window? Basic structure, DSP, basic structure doctrine, basic structure doctrine, exactly, guys, exactly. So Keshwanand Bharti is considered the backbone of Indian judicial system. It's the most popular case. It's the most important case in this uh, history of, you know, in the judicial history of this country. Um, that case actually talked about why freedoms need to be protected, why a democracy is important. And that's why, you know, we can actually um, live in a democratic society. So if I have to find Keshwan and the Bharti case and I need the exact judgment, I can go through the party name that I just showed you, right? But I have if I have the citation for it, I won't have to look in every case where Keshwan and Bharti is mentioned. All I need to do is enter the citation. Now I already have written the citation for um, Keshwan and the Bharti, but I'll explain to you what a citation is. Citation is a select, you know, combination of fields. First of all comes the publisher. So the publisher in this case was All India Reports Supreme Court because it was the judgment came from Supreme Court. That's my publisher. Which year did it come in? It came in the year 1973. Given. There was no volume number. AIR does not have a volume number, but there was a page number. Okay. What was that page number? 1461. I know that this was the page number. I have the citation. So my citation is AIR 1973 SC 1461. I entered all the feeds here. I would just run the search. This is the judgment. I got the judgment. It's as simple as that. If you're looking for a case and you have the citation, just come here, enter the fees, and you'll find the citation. You'll find the case. I click on here. I find the case. It's as simple as that. This opens in a new window. Uh, Abhisa, can you see the new window in which the case is opening? Ma'am, right now, no. Is it, has it already been opened? Or... Uh, sir, can you see the hmm. new window? Can anyone just tell me if, uh, the no. new window where the case is opened now is available? I can... I can see the judgment in the same window. Yes. Okay, great. So now you can see, I just had to click there. I found the case. It's as basic and as simple as that. But what if I don't have the whole citation? Can I run a partial citation search? Okay. So I'll go to the same place. I'll go into citation search. This time I won't enter all the fields. So what I just did was I entered, I have to select the publisher. What I'll just do is I selected the publisher. Okay. I selected the year. Okay. But I did I don't know the page number. I just know it was published by the AIR since it's a Supreme Court judgment of this year. I just entered these and I ran the search. Okay. I'm so sorry. Partial citation search not running. Just allow me a moment to get back to you on this. For some reason, there was some issue here. Okay, so we'll come back to this. But again, if you have this some details of a citation, it would, you know, you can just enter those details and you'd get the relevant citation. You'd get the relevant judgment. So this is how you run a citation search. Uh, I'll just, you know, for clarity, ask once more. Do you understand now how do you, what a citation is? Is this clear? Because as first years, this is one takeaway, you know, which is very, very important. Understanding what is citation. Yes, amazing. Thank you so much. So now that we know what citation is and how to run 
a particular citation search. If you if you find any citation, you can just come enter the fields here, and you know you're sorted. You you would find your relevant judgment. But every time you wouldn't have a party name or you wouldn't have, you know, a citation to go by. Suppose you want to write a research paper, okay? And right now, given the whole scenario, you want to write a research paper on environmental law, environmental change, okay? Or given the fact that, uh, you know, COVID was very detrimental to women employment, you want to write about something on gender justice. Uh, you know, there were more cases reported on domestic violence and everything. How do you go about it? If I just have a proposition, I don't have a case name, I don't have a citation. I just want cases on a particular topic. Usually what you would do is go to Google, type it there and run the search. And whatever blogs and all you find, you would read that. But again, Google is not made for legal research. But it's efficient. So this is Manu search. This is your Google equivalent of uh, you know, running a search there. For legal research, this is your Google. All I'll do is I'll just come here and I'll write gender justice. Okay. I wrote gender justice. These are some 7,568 cases that I have found. Okay. Again, uh, there are different filters that you can sort by. I can sort them by which case has been cited most, which is the most relevant one to my proposition. So for gender justice, apparently, Vishaka case is very, very relevant. You know, and we understand that given the fact that, you know, the premise that led to the enactment of this judgment, uh, all that had happened, why it was so important that in the absence of the law, Supreme Court gave its own guidelines. And that has been carried on for so long. So since it's such an important judgment on gender justice, it comes here. Whatever proposition you have, I'll run different propositions and then we'll come back to, you know, opening a judgment and seeing how it works. Okay. If I have a proposition on murder, should there be capital punishment for murder? Okay, so I'll just run a search on murder and capital punishment. You know, I find some 8,503 cases which are relevant to the same. Okay, so again, if you have anything that you have in mind, any proposition that you have in mind, all you need to do is come here, enter the same in your search box, run the search and you're sorted. You'll get the relevant, most relevant, uh, you know, cases out of it. So again, we'll run the gender justice search and we'll see from there how you go about it. You know, so now I want to search on gender justice, but I also want to refine it. Further. My topic is I want to write about gender justice, but I also want to write about women in both case. Okay. I'll see which is the judgment which talks the most about it. I what I did was I searched within this. Okay. So when you click on the search and results, as you can see, you refine your search. So it's that thing that you have to find a needle in a haystack. How do you go about it? Either you bifurcate the whole haystack or you just reduce it and it makes you know finding the needle easier, finding that one relevant judgment easier. Search and justice, refine my search with women in workplace. I find this judgment, this is a very important judgment, M. Kavya versus the Chairman University Grant Commission. Commission. So this is a 2014 judgment from the Madras High Court, which essentially talks about sexual harassment of women at workplace. This is something that I was looking for. Um, again, you know, you find all your relevant judgments, you find judgments which, you know, relate to it. Taro Khurana, again, a very, very important judgment on women in workplace and gender justice. So this is the idea that I have a proposition to find. How do I go about it if I don't have anything else? Uh, you know, I don't have any other information. I don't have a case. I don't have a party name. This is my Google search equivalent. I come in, I type the judgment here. I just go about it. Okay. So again, we'll run, we'll go through this once more. We'll run a fresh search so that, you know, we can see it afresh. And just for a quick revision. So I type gen gender justice here. This is the search we ran. Vijaka is the judgment that came on top. Now I have found my relevant judgment. Um, are reading judgments easy? I'm just, you know, going to ask a ballpark question here. A lot of you would have seen judgments ranging from 200 pages to 2,000 pages. Are reading judgments easy? You know, 
So, you know, judgments can range from very small judgments to very big judgments. It's very difficult as a law student, as a law intern, uh, you know, to find, you know, to find what you're looking for exactly in a judgment. Either you sit and read 2,000 pages, which would take you three to four days, or all you do is you just, you know, use the features, as I was explaining, that Spotify example. Either you can go and you can download and you can go through, you know, individual files, or you can use the text features that are available now to find the most relevant results. In this judgment, this is the Vishaka judgment. You can, again, you know, all the information is provided here with subject it is on, what are the relevant sections that were discussed, what are what is the disposition of the judgment, which cases were referred, and the entire judgment. It's all provided here. But again, either I read through all of this or I use the smart features available on Manfast. So this is where we'll start. First of all, uh, anyone, does anyone know what a commentary is? In law school, you know, you'll come across the word commentary again and again and again. Does anyone know what commentary is? Opinion, okay. It's an expert's opinion. You know, opinion of a judge, opinion of experts on the matter, opinion of professors on the matter. So when you're reading the case, why is a com uh, commentary important? A commentary is important because it helps you understand the case better. So you can, from the judgment itself, you don't have to go to the library or look at another book. You don't have to search another book. You don't have to look anywhere else. Open the judgment, click on this icon, you'll find the commentary on the judgment. Next is, now suppose I have a 2000 page judgment. How do I find which are the relevant paragraphs in the judgment? Which are the paragraphs that I need to focus on? You know, doing, running through a 2,000 page judgment manually is very difficult. That is why to make, make it easier for our users, we have this feature called the important para. In this feature, what we do essentially is we take out all the important paragraphs in the judgment. This is a small 19 page judgment. These are the important paragraphs. How do we decide these are the important paragraphs? This is done by a very well, uh, you know, equipped and very well experienced editorial team. Also, we take where these particular paragraphs, which are the paragraphs from particular judgment, which have been cited for them, which other judgments have referred. Those are the key paragraphs. Those are the paragraphs that you take, need to take a note of. How do you do it? Very simple. This is the empara. Now, this would, the top window here would show you a particular, like suppose I select this particular paragraph, which is important. It shows me the paragraph in this judgment where it comes. But it also shows me which other judgments have referred to this paragraph. So as you can see, in the case of Taru Kharana versus Union of India, as well as in the case of State of West Bengal versus Kesuram Industries, these two judgments, in these two judgments, this particular case had been referred. Very easy. I just click on it. I see that, okay, this is the paragraph you're talking about. I click on one of the judgments. The judgment comes below. So I can exactly see where this particular paragraph was referred in the future judgments. Suppose you're working on a MOOC and you're looking for authorities or you're finding a research paper and, you know, you're looking for authorities. I find one case which is absolutely relevant to my proposition. Using the empire, I can find other cases which are relevant to the uh, to your proposition. Now, again, this is something which, you know, at the base level seems very daunting given, you know, it makes you feel that legal research is such a vast enterprise. But look at it like this. If you had to do it manually, if you had to study manually, it would have been a task. But now with the help of just one feature, all you need to do is click on the feature and you have all the information which is not going only going to help you in academics, but also all the international and national competitions that you would be participating in, be it research paper writing, be it blog competition, be it moot, be it moot memorials, wherever you legal research is required, you have these AI features to help you out, okay? So that would be one that I wanted to mention. Again, because this is just the first year, we would keep, you know, uh, the lecture a little basic. I would just walk you through what the other features are. The next is again cited in para. This also tells you which judgments have referred this particular, you know, suppose Vichaka guidelines, such an important judgment. Which other judgments referred to it and in chronological order. So how, you know, it's always that, that 
you have to find which is the most recent case on this issue. So which is the most recent case that has existed? How do you go about it? Very simple. Just click on the icon. You will find. The most recent case which referred to Vishaka was is Azur Rahman was Saira Banu, seventh October, Karnataka. One click, you have this information that if you are to find manually, would take the longest time. Next, what we would discuss is just now. Okay, so next, what we have. Are you know different features again where the case has been referred, which kind of courts have referred the cases, have high courts referred to it, have supreme courts referred to it. So when you're deep studying about a judgment, this is you know you can use this to find the most relevant cases. Um, again, there are more features. We have visualization tools. We have you know uh, more features will help with which help you. Um, Abhisar, just a clarification. Can you still see the cited in para in the middle? Abesar, are you there? Hello. Yes. Can you hear me, ma'am? Hello. Hello. Can anybody else hear me uh, on the chat window? If you can say. Yes, I can hear you. I can hear. Yeah. You. Perfect. Okay. okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I think the cited in para is available. Uh, is uh, visible here, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's visible. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just remove this. Uh, we'll just go to one other case. You know that. I just run the search one. So again, we'll open Vishaka once more. So as I was saying. These are, you know, different AI and tech features that we provide that help you easily understand a particular judgment which is there. Uh, moving on, you just don't have to find a judgment. You need to either save it or you want to mail it, you know, probably to your mood partner or to a friend or you want to mail it to yourself. So you have it in your mailbox when you want to study that particular subject. Everything that you need is available directly on your partner. You want to save it as a PDF, you can do it from this particular video. You want to email it to someone? You can do it from this particular window. You want to download the judgment in Word? You can do it from here. So, in you know, it's that thing that if you want to copy paste, there is no restriction on copy paste on Manupatra. All you need to do is select you know the text that you want, go into your Word doc, go into your Notepad, paste it there. No copy paste restrictions are available. So the essential idea is that when you're doing your legal research. We try our best to make it faster, efficient, and you know more helpful for you. Moving on, um, one important feature that I would like to highlight is that is the sprint replica. So now you have the court copy of the judgment. Uh, court pronounces the judgment, and there's a particular court copy, which is the original copy of the judgment. You know, which has the judgment paragraphs that have been given by the court because they are the ones that have been referred to and again in the judgment. Publishers, when they publish it, be it online legal research databases, be it other publications that do it, there always remains that uh, possibility of an inadvertent error. Now, when you're using these judgment copies in courts or in moot courts, if there is even a slight error, that could look very badly for you. In moots, that can lead to disqualification. How do you take care of it? In Manapasra, we provide you the print replica option. Go there, just click on the print replica you will find the case copy of the judgment which has been given by the court itself. Don't have to go to the court website. Don't have to waste your time there. Don't have to, you know, uh, follow all that red tape. On Manupatra, right where you're reading the judgment, you can find the court copy of the judgment. So again, I hope that this was, this particular judgment section was helpful. If you're finding any judgment, you have all these different search interfaces to find it from. When you're reading a judgment, you have all these, these features to read from. Just click on if you want to, again, read another judgment from the search results. There's just this one. I can click on it. You come back to your results page. It's a very streamlined, specific process to do your legal research. And, you know, it's just that you need a good database. You need a good understanding of 
how to use the database and then any proposition you're looking for any judgment you're looking for any case you're looking for it's very easy to okay now for the last part of this session what i'll show you is you're looking for judgments you're looking for case laws you're doing for, looking for all of that but where does it start it starts from the law that you're studying how do you study laws you study laws with your bare hands all of you would have those publications those orange and black publications you know which you buy which is referred in your colleges to study bare hands but that is a hard copy tedious process how oh, if you and you know you cannot ever have all the bare acts that you possibly need suppose i am in my first year and i am reading contracts and it refers to some section of the companies act now i'll be studying companies act in my third year i don't have you know that bare act with me in my first year how do i study it just go to toc the table of contents on manapatra click on bare acts click on central bare acts select this just you know you'll find this entire database of bare acts from you know every single law that is there in the country you can find them in different ways from logical alphabetical and so on here i would search alphabetical now you i have a bare act but when you start with studying a law how do you go about it uh, you're given a text how do the features on manupatra help you navigate the text this we'll discuss right so first of all we'll start with aadhar uh, you know that is the first act that is coming up here suppose you're supposed to study the aadhar act how do we go about it these are all the other features as you can see you know highlighted here which are provided which help you study this particular act the first that we'll discuss is brief facts now i have heard the name of this law this new law or this new bare act that i have never heard of before how do i study it how do i get my first basic understanding of it i click on this bare acts feature this is a very simple but very effective feature it gives you exactly you know what the objective of this act is when did it come into force is it fully effective or is it partially effective have there been any amendments to this act so this covers both state amendments as well as central amendments is there any amendment pending in the past? every relevant information that you need to study uh, you know a particular bare act is available here more than that if you need you know rules and regulations all acts have rules and regulations and you know delegated le legislation with it how do you go about it just click on here you would find all the relevant rules and regulations with it if you want uh, you know annotations are available there annotations are again similar to commentary now i'll show you an app which i feel all of you would relate to especially the ones who are in their first years that is the focus of this webinar so if i have to search for a particular app how do i do it i just select control plus f i want to show you guys the contract app okay so i'll just select the indian contract app here you go 1872 found it click on it here is the app it is given to you section by suppose i just want to study section on free consent i'll click on it i can see the commentary on it i can see the digest on it i can see uh, you know the basic acts and judgments on it here i can click to open judgments which are given on a particular section so what this essentially gives you is a very streamlined way of studying a bare act because when you're studying a bare act you what is the process that you follow you understand that okay this is what this act is about got it next i want to read a section i click on it i go to the section i read the section next i want judgments on that particular section click on that go there find it so the process that you have to follow on manupatra it becomes even more easier other than that uh, when you're studying a particular law a lot of times you know there are different act versions of the same act where an act has been repealed and act new act has come every other information also that you need about bare acts has been provided here so again what did we discuss we discussed how do you find a judgment how do you find a judgment using difficult different fields if you don't have these different fields and you just have a proposition how do you use manupatra to find uh, you know uh, judgments on that if you have to study a bare act how do you uh, study a new law through manupatra and through the features we provide so this was uh, you know 
the whole presentation with this section and I really hope that this helped you understand how do you go about legal research. Now we'll take all the questions that have come up during the session and I can, uh, you know, we'll answer them and show you, uh, resolve your doubts. So Abhay sir, uh, if you could just share what questions have come. Hi, ma'am. Can you hear me, first of all? Yeah, I can hear you now. Right, perfect. Uh, ma'am, uh, somebody asked about assisted search. How do we use it? Okay, I'll just show that. So, if you have to find assisted search, you can find it here in the search bar above. When I click on assisted search, assisted search is essentially Boolean search. Okay, so I have this uh, thing where I want live-in relationship. I want cases on live-in relationship. Okay. These are the words that have to be there or like exactly these words I want. I want cases that involve, you know, the phrase live-in relationship and children. You know, so children who have been born out of wedlock through a live-in relationship, this is what I want to search for. I'll just enter that and I'll run the search and I'll find this. So essentially when you have a particular phrase that you're looking for, Essentially, when you have a particular set of words that you're looking for, and you know that is exactly what you want there to be in your judgment, you run the Boolean search. There are other options. This is just one option that I've shown you. All of the like, if you want one sentence where all the words that you've mentioned should be there in the judgment, one, you can use that. If you want any of these words, you know, if it's an either or situation, you can use this. If you want, again, exactly a particular phrase, you can use that. If you specifically do not want these words in your search, you can eliminate those as well. If you want a particular set of words which should be within, you know, in the same sentence or you want them next to each other or next to, next to each other, you can select the proximity, you can search these words and you can run the search. So this is what assisted search is. If you have exact particular phrases, words that you're looking for, you can use it to run your search. Uh, Abhesa, do you want to add something? No, I think that's perfect. Okay. okay. So assisted search is basically when you want to use Boolean search, but you don't want to use inverted commas, anything like that. So this is one of the easy way to do your Boolean search, which is a level high on the Manu search that you can do from here. Okay, ma'am. Uh, another, some questions were relating to Bear Act. How do you open them and uh, how to download a Bear Act? So if you can go to okay, that. Okay, sure, point. absolutely. So if you have to access Bear Act, again, this is the table of contents. This is the Bear Act, you know, head. Just go there. You can always choose between if you want a central Bear Act or you want a state Bear Act. If now you want, if you want a central Bear Act, click on this again. Like I'll just close this and show you. If you want, sorry, so sorry. If you want the central bear act, all you need to do is click here. Just go on to the table of contents. Now, you know, you can just select which way you want. Suppose I want bear acts on a particular subject. I want bear acts from a particular ministry. I want bear acts from a particular industry. You can just, you know, make that selection and do it. If you just want to normally search for a bear act, select alphabetical, go to all. And do just control plus F and find the bear act that way. Now, if there are a few with contracts, if I'm looking for the workman's breach of contract amendment act, all I need to do is, or if I'm looking for the working journalist, this is a very, very important act. All I need to do is view this act in a single doc, print it from here, or save it from here, download it. As simple as that. You got your entire bear app in one particular document. Ma'am, that window is not visible. The that window is not you... visible. Okay. I'll just share it once more. I think there's some issue on the um, One more thing, like uh, there are different questions relating to how to refine a search or how to uh, use an important para. What we can do is give them a how-to section. In Manupatra, we have a section where we have given, explained all these things in a particular video. So specific questions that you might have relating to a particular feature, mm -hmm. you can go to that section and you will be able to see different videos. Um, can we show them how to access that how-to videos in Manupatra? Okay, absolutely. I'll just do that. 
So I've just logged out of this particular Okay, so if you want how to use videos on Manopatra, uh, it is again a free resource. Go to the homepage or go to our YouTube channel. All you need to do is, I'll just show you on YouTube itself. Either you can use our training manual from here if you want. There are, once you click on the training manual, there are videos on how do you use Manopatra. Here you can find all the links. If you want GST search on Manopatra, if you want legal search on Manopatra, if you want filters on Manpatra, if you want relevant section on Manpatra, Empara that I just showed you, how do you email a judgment from Manpatra? How do you run citation search from Manpatra? Case map authority check. Any feature that you want, just go to the training manual. Just go through the training manual. Uh, you know, you can look at the feature, you can understand the explanation of the feature and you can find the YouTube video. Just click on this and it will take you to YouTube on our uh, YouTube channel and you will find, you know, uh, the judge, the particular video that you're looking for, understanding, like this is the understanding case map on Manapatra. Just go there, there's your video. It absolutely explains you how do you, um, you know, use the case map, gives you a use case for the same. So any feature that you want, any specific feature that you want to understand on Manapatra, you can do it through there. When there's a training manual, there's a video section. Also, if you want a specific training session for, from your college, you can put in your, put in your request here. That is it. All right. So for this session, the range of the questions start from like, what is a bear act to how do we submit a research proposal? So the range is very huge because there are like number okay. of students that are joining us. So okay. for this particular session, what we are doing is like just concentrate on Manupatra and like what are the different things that different sources that you can use that we've already put in place. Okay. So mm -hmm. that might be in YouTube. There is our LinkedIn page. There is our Instagram page. So these are all, we are very much active on these platforms. So you can like in, in terms of getting daily updation for a particular thing also, it will be very helpful. So if you can join us there, so that will be great for like you are just most of you are just starting out like five years down the line if you just take out like that little bit of information every day we'll have a good resource at the end of five years apart from that i think um, um, for articles uh, have we shown them the articles how do you access the articles yeah i'll just show that once again because as you said ki there was this question how do you submit a research proposal so uh, if you're in your first year right now you have to start with you know you would like write research papers you would write blogs even going down further down the line we have uh, this so i'll just show you the articles page on manapatra okay so i'll just share my screen once again now articles is again a free resource even if you don't have access to manapatra all you need to do is go to articles.manapatra.com you'll find a very comprehensive you know database on uh, articles now we no, don't only publish articles from professionals like academic journals and all of that we also publish student articles so if you're interested in submitting an article to manapatra right now all you need to do is submit your article to articles at manapatra.com and you know we would review the article and if it's relevant to us we would publish it on uh, the portal uh, so uh, yeah that's about it uh, any subject you want to study articles on if you're looking for articles for your research paper for your research project you can just go to this portal run that search and you're sorted so, uh, does anyone know what here online is or what jstor is does anyone have any idea so here online and jstor are international databases for articles in India, Manupatra is the same thing for you. When you're studying for a topic, when you're looking for, you know, research on a research paper, you always need scholarly peer articles that you have to cite or that would help you, that would help you understand the subject better. On Manupatra articles, you can always find them very easily. Just come to this portal, enter your search, find articles. If you want to submit articles, again, as I said, you can submit them to articles at Manupatra. Anything else? So, right. In terms of, there are many questions in terms of um, 
first of all subscription of manupatra is my college mm. subscribe to manupatra or not the number one resource would be go to your library and ask them like have do you have a manupatra subscription most probably you have in case it does you don't have that you can reach out to us at contact at the rate manupatra or your library might reach out to us and if you want any kind of a session also like no course session like this legal research thing that we just showed we can arrange it for you so if you want to if you want to check if you have a manupatra subscription or not um, go to your library first number two is like there are some people who are like uh, in if any case you have any kind of a query in in accessing manupatra or you want so you can write to us at contact at the rate manupatra.com so i'm just writing that in the chat window so anytime you are having any problem relating to accessing manupatra or you want to like catch up on something so you can just reach out to us this is contact at manupatra.com monday to friday we are very much active there like in 5 10 minutes we'll get a decent response somebody from our college will reach out so this is our id contact at the rate manupatra and the other one is also there support at the rate manupatra so both of these email id any issue that you might be facing accessing manupatra you can write at at contact at the rate manupatra dot com any other questions sir Okay, so I was just going through the chat window right now and there are so many questions that I lost track completely. Right. So if you have any other questions, tomorrow you would get a follow-up mail for, from the session. You can always revert to that with your questions and we would try our best to answer them. Um, someone just asked, how do you make notes on Manapatra? We have a sticky note feature. Uh, you know, we would, if you, again, for all college students, if you want a more detailed session for your own college, please feel free to write to us at contact at manvatra.com and we'll do our best to arrange it. And right. again, I hope right. this session was really, really helpful to everyone. And a lot of the questions that you're asking, that is the videos are already available on our YouTube mm -hmm. channel or on that how to session that uh, Soumya just showed. So most of your queries will be answered from there. If in case if some other questions are there, you can of course reach out to us at contact at the rich Manupatra. And again, like if you want to have a session like this for your own college, like you want to have like independent college session, so you can always reach out to your library or reach out to us so we can arrange another session independently for your college. Okay. Uh, thank you for all of you. Uh, like coming up, it is it was scheduled like three days ago. So like a lot of uh, number of students have registered for this one so that is like the hunger for any kind of a research database any kind of a professional knowledge is uh, huge so that is a promising sign for future legal industry anything you want to add from them no no again uh, as you just said that there was a very overwhelming response and given that we just had a whole webinar series for first years uh, it was really nice to see you know the kind of seriousness that this particular batch has and, uh, you know, uh, someone has asked, will we be uploading this? We'll definitely upload this on YouTube. All our webinars, that's why we have free of cost webinars and all of them are freely available on YouTube. Also, if you, uh, you know, view them and if you have a question and you write it in the comment section, we make it a point to go and answer them every time. So please go and check them out. Uh, we hope that this webinar was helpful. And again, if you have any webinar suggestions, anything of that sort, any communication that you want to do to us, please write at contact at manapatra.com and we'll definitely reach back. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir.